Hey there, Matt Filio in the studio. Um, finishing up on this large 48 by 72 canvas. Uh, what I'm working on now is a shipping process. And the question is, how do you ship a huge painting overseas? Uh, this is a 48 by 72, so I was thinking, man, how am I going to get this overseas to Brunei? Um, and this painting would have to be packaged up in a crate at four by six feet. A giant painting. I was getting shipping quotes into the two, three thousand dollar range. And I thought that is ridiculous. I don't think the client's going to go for it. And eventually the client said, hey, why don't you just take the canvas uh, off of the stretcher bars, roll it up, and ship it in a tube. And so that's my plan. If you can see that. And it's a large tube that I got from Menards, from a home improvement store, for free. I was just walking along and I saw they had this big, almost four inch wide tube. Um, and it was just sitting there not being used. It was, um, I guess they had linoleum on it. And I said, hey, could I have that tube? And eventually had to wait around a while for a manager, but I got that tube for free. Uh, strapped it to the roof of my car and then I cut it with a uh, hacksaw. Um, it was 12 feet long originally and I cut it down to 5 feet long, 60 inches long. And I even made these little caps here on the end just using my paint containers that I drilled a couple holes, put a string in, and then I can just set this right in the top. And then you can pull that out. And then what this does is it keeps the tube nice and rigid. And so the next step then is to um, take the canvas off of the frame. And then we have the back side of the canvas. So I flipped this over on my drafting table. So it's just sitting upright on that. And I already moved a couple of screws and very, very carefully I used a screwdriver, flatted screwdriver, and just kind of dug out underneath those screws. And then used a needle nose pliers to pull them out. And then also an X-Acto blade to carefully cut across the edge of the gessoed part of the canvas. Because if you pull that too quickly, you could tear the canvas. So I just kind of scored the edge a little bit. And then carefully pulled that apart. So just show you that process here on this particular staple. So we just kind of dig underneath it. I want to hold that canvas nice and taut. And I start at the corners here because this is the same way you would finish up a canvas is by working on the corners. You know, when you're stretching a canvas, you're going to start in the center and then work your way out. So I'm going to remove it the same way it would be stretched on. So just trying to dig out underneath this very carefully here. And try not to damage that canvas in the process. Now that I have it started, hopefully I can and do the rest with the needle nose pliers. Sometimes you have to alternate back and forth between the two. Try working from the top side. There we go. Now I can feel it lifting up. So just a tiny bit of damage on the gesso, but the canvas itself is fine. That's the main thing. This is a good sturdy canvas. But uh, now this section here is pretty loose. And this is all stapled on the back, not on the side. So I would just continue the process around and kind of alternate um, between all the corners so I'm not working primarily on just one end. And then after I get all the staples off, then I'll be able to just pull this stretcher frame off of it and I'll have the canvas sitting here on my drafting table and it'll be ready to roll it up. Okay, and now you grab a tube that is smaller in diameter to give the painting some rigidity 
and so that the uh, canvas doesn't get crushed and we roll it up slowly and there's a piece of plastic thin plastic that separates the canvas from the the tube and keeps the paint from sticking onto itself you want to roll it up nice and straight and then roll it up in a piece of canvas as well that protects it again from any dents or anything that could happen during shipping make it nice and flat and then cover it up with a piece of um, craft paper we tape it up on all ends nice and solid with some masking tape and again that'll protect the canvas and then we go ahead and uh, put that into the tube. It should slide in there pretty easily. And you can use a little bit of um, bubble wrap or something if you need to, to cushion it and make sure it's a tight fit. You don't want anything rattling around in there. And then I put that cap on, a homemade cap that I made out of a paint bottle and snap in both ends really tight. Make sure they're snug and everything's flush. And this tube, by the way, I put a varnish on the outside to protect it from any moisture. You can kind of see a shininess on there. But there you see how it looks on the end. Um, you got the string, we just kind of pull that tight. And then that's going to get taped over. Um, and as we tape that, then it'll be really easy to remove the uh, cap off the bottom. All he has to do, the customer, all he has to do is cut that off and pull that off. And then um, after that, we put on this cardboard cap that I made, um, and that uh, gets taped over the edge. So this is a cardboard cap I made myself, just um, out of a piece of corrugated cardboard and cut slits out and then bent them so that you can take a uh, you know, piece of regular packaging tape and just go over in one direction, anchor that down really tight. And see, this, this uh, cap here will keep anything from falling out. If the first cap didn't do it, the plastic cap, this one will. Uh, that one was taped in solidly. This one is taped over that. And we go across in the other direction. Um, again, anchoring that down really tight on both sides. And after this, then we work our way around. After we have everything anchored down, we tape around it going across the circumference of the tube several times. I don't think it hurts to have too much tape when this is being shipped um, all the way over to, to Brunei. Uh, we just want to make that really tight and really solid. Uh, like I say, putting on that second layer and making sure that fits nice and snug. And you can test it out, kind of uh, hold up the tube when you're done and make sure you know, nothing is rattling inside and uh, you know that nothing's going to fall out. Here I have it in the car and it's on its route to the UPS shipping place. And uh, from what I heard from the, the customer, um, it, it actually made it there in one piece and he received it okay. So I am just excited about that and glad he got that safe and sound. Um, but anyway, this is how you ship a large uh, 48 by 72 painting, or any painting for that matter. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. And you can subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this. Uh, mostly touching on the actual aspect of painting uh, realistic acrylic portraits. Uh, but occasionally I have some tips like this as well, dealing with other aspects of the painting business. And then if you go to realisticacrylic.com, realisticacrylic.com, I have some tutorials there uh, that you can follow uh, for more painting tips. And to help you uh, paint an acrylic portrait you can be proud of. So God bless. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon.